Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And so we want to thank our newest patrons. Indeed, we want to say a huge thank you to Tracy and Joelle. Thank you guys so much for joining our family over there. We will be doing a video Patreon only on some more, a little bit more stickier subjects, so to speak. Not that this isn't sticky. This is sticky. Uh, absolutely sticky. Iran warns Israel of a regional earthquake. There is a chance to prevent the Israeli-Palestinian conflict from spilling over Tehran believes, but the choice of the word earthquake I thought was so, well, biblical, because it is. So this is the Iranian foreign minister urging Israel to end its airstrikes in Gaza, warning that the conflict with Hamas could spread across the region if Israel sends ground forces into the enclave and Lebanese military group Hezbollah enters the fray. So, I mean, you know, again, when you look at the highest level of pieces that are in play as far as the puppets, they, they understand the bigger purpose. Of course, as you go farther on down the line, uh, there are those that, that don't understand what's really happening. They just see it as a direct attack on a certain group of people. Yes, we understand in, in retribution for another attack, which was in retribution for another attack, which was in retribution. You get it? This, this is how it keeps going for 2,000 plus years. More than 2,000 in, in reality. Uh, by the way, I, I just thought this was just not a coincidence. I mean, how could this possibly be a coincidence? We have another 6.3 earthquake in uh, the same area in Afghanistan. And again, Afghanistan, as soon as this started, the Taliban were saying, you know, hey, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, let us cross your territory because we're going to come and we're going to put an end to this. And, you know, then you, you have immediately these quakes coming and, and they don't seem to stop. Uh, it's been nonstop. And there's been multiple 6.3s. I counted three 6.3s exactly, which again, you know, nature is not usually so perfect so precise and you know we've been following earthquakes daily for you know close to a decade uh 6.3 and then maybe a 6.1 maybe then a 5.7 yeah but you know you have thousands of lives i mean people have lost everything no food no shelter again afghanistan uh their people have suffered as much as any on the world i mean it, it it's just been nonstop warfare and and it was the u.s in there before we left all that equipment which could be used against us and actually is but you got to recognize all the equipment is always all this weapons and all the money that goes towards death is truly all about death towards humanity we got to start looking at things differently very differently this is war against humanity by inhumane beings and this is the truth and yet you have humans that are carrying this out because they've been promised that they will have it better than other humans so this is looking at just that little area near Herat in Afghanistan 6.3 6.3 as we can see the 11th the 14th the 10th uh, 6.3 and uh, they're, <laughs> I, don't, I just don't buy that they're coincidental. And many people now probably think that we are looking at Ezekiel 38. Uh, those that um, are Bible believers and that have been waiting for Armageddon to come. Uh, and, and again, that, that's a battle in a particular uh, valley, <laughs> so to speak. You know, again, it, there's these mistranslations, misconceptions is probably more accurate of what these words truly mean as they have changed over the years. They really, truly have changed over the years. And so this is the King James version. Again, King James, this is 1611 and King James 
obviously is coming from a royal bloodline. Kingship comes from where? On high. The royal bloodlines are actually the bloodlines of those beings uh, that handed off power when they no longer openly ruled. Because there was a time when the gods ruled man. That's just something that comes up in all different traditions around the globe. There was a time when the gods ruled man directly. Then they put in, in place kings and certain bloodlines to rule while they were no longer visible in front of us. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people know this. So many people have read the Bible and um, I'm very curious, you know, when people do read the Bible and I asked myself this plenty of times too, like when I read through something, why am I so dismissive of, of things and what is it in that Bible that makes people say, you know, it's almost like it. there's no emotion. You might read something really horrific about a genocide and all these children were killed and every man, woman, child, animal, all these horrific things done. But it's like you still believe in it and it, it's still OK for you to openly accept this this piece of work. And for myself, it was almost like there was a spell. It was a spell cast, you know, and. When you look at spells, they're very curious little things because uh, you don't understand your own emotions. It's just you're driven toward this thing or away from this thing and you can't really make any sense of it. There is no, there's no history. There is no preconceived anything. It's just your emotions do what they do. And this is a type of bending of the ether that these controllers are so very good at. They do cast spells. They do utilize their abilities. And then they turn around and they tell us that it's a sin. However, I would never, ever, ever use my abilities to alter someone's free will. But they do. And uh, it's just something that's so common. And then people get afraid that, um, you know, somebody might take away their Bible and that's not what we are wanting to do we're simply wanting to break that spell so people could be free they could be free and have their own their own uh, journey here on earth so these were tribes uh, that that are basically being called out in Ezekiel and this is one that I probably have read a thousand times Literally, and it, when I was uh, a kid, I was always trying to decipher it. It always um, triggered something in me. And, and it's because, again, uh, I understood the bigger picture, the higher self did. <laughs> I always knew I'd be alive in these times. I always knew it, that this was the purpose of my life, was basically to show people that they are under a spell and, you know, as the guides have recently worded it when we talked about the war and because they've always said um, that the war is something that doesn't, it's not that it's really avoidable. We can't avoid it. We can mitigate how long it'll last and, and the consequences, but we can't avoid it. It's been set in place literally by people's beliefs. This is part of what is, <laughs> how it's done. The the implanting of the seeds of these prophecies cause us to, to manifest them. And, and then they just guide it. They just guide it. So when you see people, you know, 1959, Alois Ermeiler saw these times. You know, he was looking at the timeline that was set in, set in motion uh, much longer before he was ever walking the earth in that incarnation and the same goes for Nostradamus now Nostradamus worked for the system Alois didn't uh, Alois uh, he was asked by the police and by the military to tell you know locations of people that are missing or where are the Germans gonna bomb in World War II and and he would get an impression and say don't don't leave the people here you want to move them from here to there but he didn't work for the system Nostradamus worked for the system. You know, they enticed him uh, to work for them. And again, because he, he served the crown and he served the church. So he served the system. So a lot of his uh, prophecies 
were given, and he knew uh, to a degree the playbook, albeit he was a very, very gifted person. Mm -hmm. Extremely gifted. And I look at him and I can actually tie energies and soul stream into Nostradamus, people that have such power over their pineal glands that they could change their eye color. I really found that fascinating when I saw that with Nostradamus. And it's not that that's completely gone. I do believe people to a degree can still change their eye color. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot more prevalent. See, we have bil abilities laying deep inside of us that have been hidden for hundreds and hundreds of years and they're doing everything they can to keep us from exploring who we are they do their best to make sure we feel guilty if we even think about exploring different parts of us yeah so it's this is the king james version and the word of the lord came unto me and this is ezekiel supposedly speaking and again, it's it's not thought thought that this was um, necessarily truly put in place by Ezekiel. Again, this could be something where somebody is. Are you familiar that uh, Mark Twain, Samuel Clements, was actually his name, but he wrote under um, you know the name Mark Twain. And then there are people that will write under legendary people's names, but it's not them that it's actually writing it. And, and this is what many people that have, you know, the, the scholars that have gone deeper, they recognize that this is the case, as well as the fact that when we are looking at the Hebrew, they, they do not write the, um, they do not put in the vowels. So it was up to the translators to put the vowels in. And we're talking over centuries. We are talking over centuries. So, you know, mistranslations do abound. You know, they do abound. And that's just a fact. Even in our New Testament, there are, um, there are parts of the four Gospels that are not in agreement. And that will be a subject that we'll put together another video for. Uh, as we're going to tear into these one at a time, uh, just to, you know, again, take some of that spell off of uh, this, even though, yeah, absolutely, it does look like Ezekiel 38 is is all set to happen, um, but we're expecting it. So many people are expecting it, are they not? Again, when you look to Christianity, two <laughs> billion plus uh, of, of the eight billion people that are on the planet it's, it's really a, a third of the people on the planet are will say that they are Christian. And then right behind them is Islam, the fastest growing religion. So more than half the world is either Christian or Islam. And those two theologies dominate the planet. And of course, the root is Judaism. Well, to a degree, you have to recognize that too. There's other elements in there. So, son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Mesh and Tubal, and prophesy, prophecy against them. Again, these were tribes back in the, that day. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been taken to be certain people, but you will see disagreements even amongst the scholars to a degree. Some, some we could see clearer than others. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army horses, horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Well, the reality is, uh, do we see Hamas handling swords? Do we see Russia handling swords? Are they, <clears throat> are they on horseback? No, they're not on horseback. No, they're not handling swords. You know, yes, they do have uh, AKs. Unfortunately, they have some ARs of ours. They have a lot of rocket launchers. They have tanks. Uh, you know, they have MiGs and, and, and other things as well. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, all his bands, the house of Togamarth to the north quarters and all his bands. And many people would be with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come. And this is one of those prophecies where people um, take it and they believe totally in the Bible because of, of where it talks about this part. 
After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which has been always waste, but is brought forth out of all the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, and thou and all thy bands and thy people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, uh, and again, these are not direct translations as, as we have pointed out before, and we'll take a look at a different translation. It shall come to pass that at that time uh, shall things come into his mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. Ah, okay, so this happens often in the Bible where God puts a thought into somebody's mind to do something against something he said just so he could punish. This happens time and time again, you know, and, and when we look to Chronicles, Kings, we look to uh, David numbering and taking a census, you know, in one encounter it says that God put in his mind to take a census after he was told, do not take a census. Whatever you do, don't take a census. And then God puts it in his mind, take a census, take a census. Mm-hmm. In another uh, translation, it says Satan does that. And Satan, again, literally just means the adversary. It it just means the adversary. So it's not reflecting to an individual. Uh, uh, Again, uh, the people that are usually most vocal about these things, they they haven't done in-depth studies, don't know the original Hebrew words that were used and in what way they were being used. Just like angel, you know, is really coming from the Greek messenger again. So thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. To take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolated places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba and Dadan and merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Thou art come to take a spoil, hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to carry away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, Gog, Gog, again, G-O-G, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shall thou not know it. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, a mighty army. I've seen a lot of them on motorcycles, heading and, and in jeeps and things like that. But again, they didn't have words for this in that day. And like when you look at the Vimanas, uh, again, that are mentioned, often they're kind of like flying castles. You know, they're like flying cities. They were ships. People didn't know how to ex- explain it um, to a degree. And all this that we see transpiring now has transpired in the ages past. This is part of the big reveal. So, and thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land that shall be in the later days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before thy eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, art thou he of whom I had spoken in time, old time, by servants of the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall... Come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, yes, this is a vengeful, fiery, uh, you know, obviously it's a warlord. And this is a warlord, uh, again, the reveal is that it's an extraterrestrial. (laughs) That is, you know, it's actually a group that are giving uh, this to be dispersed. This is not the creator and... You know, even they even did allow it to get into the Bible in one spot where the Pharisees and the Sadducees come up to Yeshua Jesus, and he says, "You know, your God's not my God. Your God has been a you know bloodthirsty tyrant since day one, a murderer and a killer." This is exactly um, the power structure, and and so again, 
it, it goes on and talks about this uh, horrible wrath and, and what happens. So that the fishes of the sea, the fowls of the heaven, the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. And the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every water shall fall to the ground. And I will call for sword against him through all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. Divide and conquer. I mean, how clear is that? How could you even, how could you even think that this is a, a, a benevolent being? There's no benevolence here. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood that will rain upon him, upon his bands and upon as many people that are with him, an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. Y yeah, you know, it, it's it's not. It's not love. It, it's not, and this is the new international version where where some things do change. And it talks about you know an earthquake in that day, and it talks about pestilence uh, so bad that you know again, how does he show his his greatness with plague and bloodshed by put, pitting brother against brother? This is so clearly the system that we are in. I mean, how could we not see it? And when we look to the Hebrew uh, in the Orthodox Jewish Bible and the Devar Hashem, Hashem, Shem is all about name. And so this, this is where the translations, some, some say that this is uh, literally saying, and a messenger of the Lord said, oh, a messenger of the Lord said, not the Lord himself. And then again, you know, Lord can be translated as Yahweh, it can be translated as El, which El is recognized as the Canaanite storm god. And then it can be translated as Elohim, and is translated as Elohim in the plural, like mighty ones, powerful ones, the judges that come from the sky. As you can see, Adonai Hashem, so so here it's it's not the same words being used even, and, and yet you'll see Lord God, Lord God. No, it's it's not the original words, Lord God. There's different words being used there. And this is again, we're, we're, it, a lot of the misunderstandings come from, because again, when we start looking at, at it, this is originally not talking about the creator. It's not. It's never been talking about the creator of this universe. No, it's talking about the rulership of these extraterrestrials that do come and and did come and took over the planet, and then set up their puppets in place, and and it talks about them using things like earthquakes and using pestilence against us and pitting brother against brother. Where's the love in this? And I love, love watch, pe watching people come up to realizations. You know, so this person, this is a long time ago, well, a while ago, said, uh, <clears throat> there's only one God, right? So there is only one being in the whole world that can call himself God with the word I. Yet we have this Malak Hashem repeatedly acting as if he is God himself. And, and again, all those people in the Sunday pulpits that don't even understand that there's different words being used because they've never been taught. You know, they just hear Lord God, Lord God. They might hear Jehovah. They might hear Yahweh. Maybe they understand the, the Y and the J thing with Yahweh and Jehovah. You know, but when you get down to it, they don't understand that this was never about the creator of this universe. And and you should, you know, just look at this. I am the God of Beth El. You know, there, there's a distinguishing. Okay, I'm not that God. I'm the God over here. This is what's being said. No, no. And, it, and then it makes sense when it said, thou shall have no other alien gods or no other foreign gods. Thou shalt put no other gods before me. This is also why when you look, I am the God of Isaac, you know, of Abraham, etc. 
Because, you know, in Sumeria, the city-states each had their own, and again, Abraham came out, Abram came out of Sumeria and, and went off to the west. And so his particular deity uh, was that that we call Yahweh, but was one, one amongst many, one amongst many. And many, and so you get these people scrambling. Well, uh, 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 I don't know. This is problematic. This this doesn't make sense. But what we are told, no, because this is it's been so mistranslated and and misunderstood purposefully. This was never again about the Creator. What do we see? Um, we see what can easily be described as a bully because you know if you don't do what i say i will send plague pestilence fire and famine and and he does well the correct translation would be they do they do again the leningrad codex is thought to be the oldest complete manuscript of the hebrew bible right the the it, this is the oldest one we have it was made in Cairo, probably around 1008 CE. CE. Well, you know, Ezekiel is supposedly taking place like 560 years BC. This is 1500 years later? Hello. But it works. It serves their purpose. And then we see that people are waking up to the fact that earthquake weapons, you know, I don't think it's just a, a one of those CONS piracy theories. Did Tesla create an earthquake machine back in the 1890s? Well, you know, it's on record. Uh, Canna rays from Alaska and other places, because there's more than one harp, create earthquakes. Oh, there's technology. Absolutely. This particular uh, whistleblower, again, is talking about this. Systems located in Antarctica is responsible for the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand. The rea reality is uh, there have been the technologies in place in Antarctica since 500 B.C. That's the reality. Avi Loeb, you know, talked about extraterrestrials. And he also says he believes that the, the uh, government may have the technology to create artificial environmental disasters. Of course they do. And where did they get it got from? They got it from the extraterrestrials that gave it to them because the extraterrestrials themselves were doing it when they were here. And as we see here, Russia's weather control systems being used against the Jewish state, causing a delay in the IDF's offensive because it's flooding right now. So according to multiple reports, the ground invasion of Gaza has been postponed because of flooding. Ah, all makes sense. The Air Force bombshell, they admit they can control the weather. In fact, there was, again, not just a U.S., but also a Chinese um, statement that they both, <laughs> both the United States said they want to have the goal of being able to control the weather by 2025. That's that date. Remember those DEA, GEL numbers, 2025. China said the exact same thing, exact same year. And this is what we were talking about with the Vimanas. People saw the wars of the gods over their heads. And I would encourage people to look into um, look into the, the Hindu holy books because, I mean, it clearly shows that there were good extraterrestrials fighting off the bad extraterrestrials on our planet during the Bronze Age. And it, it might have started... Um, even as far as the infiltration at the latter part of the Silver Age. But by the end of the Bronze Age, all that was left here was the Dark Ones. And, and now the Dark Ones, their power is starting to wane again. So we will be exposed to other beings that are not so uh, nefarious. This is a good book. Uh, if you really want to read more about the Vimanas, we have this one. Um, Enrico Baccarini's Vimanas and the War of the Gods. Yeah, that's a good one. There's so many. Uh, we're going to have to do an updated version of some of our reading lists for you guys as we've added so many books. Uh, I finished this a few weeks ago. This was a, a quick read. This was great. Um, it was just so easy and fast to read. 
Moro, <coughs> Moro Bellino. It was has interviewed with Graham Hancock, the gods of the Bible. Uh, yeah, they're all extraterrestrials. And in fact, you know, as Cindy is such a wonderful channel, uh, more than one occasion, I think three times now, uh, the Anunnaki themselves have knocked on the door and, and asked to give us a message because there's no way that we would ever allow uh, them to fully channel through her. The energy's too dark, and, and they, they wouldn't be allowed by our own guides uh, who can block them quite easily. But, you know, they did announce themselves the very first time as we are your gods of the Bible. We are the gods of the Torah, etc. They're, they're very arrogant beings. And, and I'm watching this and what's the what's the takeaway? And the takeaway is look at the information that's in the Bible and look at what we have going on now. And there is really not much difference with the exception of vocabulary words that are talking about weapons, but we have so many weapons today. Um, these are the same beings. These beings are what we could call reptilians beings. They're not very nice. They are very warlike. And there is a, a, some things that Yeshua said that are true that I hold near to my heart. And one of them one of them is so helpful and I, I wonder if it broke that whole spell over me and uh, the words the truth shall set you free the truth shall set you free so when you are able to look at this book in the sense that it is controlling and it is controlling you then you are allowed to step out into your own world without any fear and explore yourself and understand really how powerful you are we are powerful beings they are so afraid we're going to discover that we can manifest we can manifest with our heart chakras together a world that is not like theirs a world that is full of peace but we have to understand where the manipulation lies so we can step outside of that yeah, and Moro did translations for the Vatican, by the way. You know, so this is the thing. When you study it deep enough, it becomes so obvious. There's no way you could believe the story. And, and you don't. You know, as, as somebody that becomes more of a scholar, when you look deep, you understand. It, the, at best, all we can take from this is allegory. At best, all we can turn it into is some sort of, of generalization you know, you look to uh, creating um, astro theology out of it. You know, again, it, it, you try to make sense of these things because there are so many things that don't make sense in in the former in the formal way that it's translated today. That often it just goes, well, that's you know, that's that's God. It, it's just a divine mystery. How could we understand it? That's <laughs> that's what the control system wants you to do. Don't worry, just line up for your, ow, just, you know, trust us. Yeah, sure, no, and and the world is waking up, and the world will recognize that they have been duped big time and, and controlled through belief systems that get us to manufacture, literally, um, all the chaos uh, that we see transpiring. So unfortunate. But again, there is a, a creator of this particular universe. No, it's not Yahweh. It's not Jehovah. Uh-uh, it's not. And it's not even this cute little kitty cat. But doesn't mean, you know, if you throw away the Bible or the Koran or the Torah th that you're an atheist. No, quite the opposite. You know, again, source is, is within all of us right now. They want you <clears throat> to utilize their belief systems because you get power to them. It's just that simple. You don't have to get power to anybody. You just have to tap into what's already within you. You, you don't need anything else. No, you know, again, recognize the gaslighting uh, that's in play here when you think about the whole concept of original sin. The whole concept of original sin it, it, it's narcissistic abuse. It, it's gaslighting. It, it's totally putting into play such a feeling of guilt for just being. 
this is uh, it's it's a travesty and and it should be uh, recognized as such and would be if it wasn't for the fact that humanity has been so traumatized and abused by these beings and by each other because you know again these beings get us to do it to ourselves take the time to go within and heal the soul may you be blessed by the truth source of all namaste namaste